welcome to Going to IEU podcast. I'm Eden Realis, you today's host. I'm here today with MT, also Marie-Therese Burkhard. She's my fellow classmate in politics, law and economics, and also doing the dual degree with law. Hello, MT. Hi, Ida. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, and you? I'm very good, too. <laughs> And today we're going to talk about Segovia. Yes. So both of us were in Segovia two years mm -hmm. prior to coming here. How was your experience there? I have to say I loved Segovia. Um, I think, well, actually it's funny because I nearly didn't go to IE because for our degree for PLE, um, when we started uh, three years ago, we had to start in Segovia for two years and then change to Madrid. And because um, I went to boarding school before in Oxford, which is also, you know, a very, a very small town. Um, I didn't want to go to an even smaller town in Spain. Um, but then, I don't know, I, I, I liked IE so much that I thought I should give it a, a try. And thank God I did, because I really, really enjoyed Segovia for two years. Um, I never really thought I was a nature person or anything, but you do appreciate it being in Segovia. Like you have so many parks and you're on a hill and you have this beautiful view and you go to the, um, to the mountains or the lake. And I don't know, it was very, very fun. And we're going to unravel the Scovia bit by bit in this talk today. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have a favorite place, Scovia? You mentioned the nature, maybe the hills. Yes, I I loved watching the sunset on the hills. So like from uh, Plaza Mayor, it's like a, what, like a 10 minute, like uphill, like walk, essentially. <laughs> yeah, like a little hike um, to see the sunset. And that was absolutely beautiful. You had the cathedral in the background, you had the sunset, um, and it was just extremely nice like we'd go there and listen to music and it was it was beautiful you'd see the stars um so that was absolutely gorgeous and apart from that I also I know it's a classic but just sitting at Plaza Mayor and like having the view of the cathedral and I don't know drinking a coffee or a glass of wine that was always super super nice then obviously also um shout mm -hmm. I think that was everyone's favorite bar in Segovia um and uh, the guys that run it they were also I don't know, such characters, they were always fun to see every week. Um, and like, basically just to explain, like this bar had like, it was plastered in posters. There was not a single space that was not plastered by some kind of retro poster. And you could play the um, the table football. The foosball. Foosball, yeah, yeah that's what you call it, exactly. Um, so that was, that was just fantastic. And I think just also because Segovia is so small, um, but yeah, it's, it's, you would bump into everyone exactly at these places. And I think that was what made uh, Segovia so charming. So for people who don't know Segovia, mm -hmm. this bar shout is how far from Plaza Mayor? Oh, it's like a minute, I think. Like The thing is, when you go to Segovia and you first visit it, I don't know if you had the same experience, but it seems like there's one street and that's it. And in a way, like, yes, obviously it's very small and it's all situated across one hill with like Plaza Mayor being at the top and kind of the bar street being like at the side and then the street towards the hill like leading to that. But because there are so many like small alleys, it's it's just really, really charming. It has so much history and um, you still bump into everyone. It's like kind of a family there, you know? I agree. It's more of a community because yeah. also very much closer mm -hmm. and you live next door to everyone. Yeah. So how did you live in Segovia? So, did you go to a residence or? Yeah, yeah. So in the first year I was living in the factory residence, which is kind of to imagine it at the bottom of the hill, like a 10 minute walk to IE. And um, I know, I think like a lot of people really, really enjoyed it because obviously it's like you get to meet a lot of people there and a bunch of people live there that all go to IE essentially. Um, I think just why I didn't enjoy it that much is um, I was in boarding school for two years before. So this kind of, this whole thing of like living in a house with a bunch of people. I had that for so long that I feel like I personally was like looking forward to living alone and to having an apartment or living with, with, with friends or like maybe some like one or two people. How so come I then that you choose residence over uh, apartments? So I, I went to um, an open day and um, there was um, a girl showing me around that I'm actually friends with now. And she was lovely and she was telling me how much fun she had there. And knowing like, from boarding school that you do have so much fun living in a house with a bunch of people, I thought I'd give it a shot. And also like it looks super like close to uni and like the rest looks super far away, if that makes sense. If you uh -huh. live like further near Plaza Mayor 
although it, at the end of the day it's actually the same distance but on google maps it looks that way so that's why i chose it um and i know a lot of people that really 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 enjoyed it just for me um yeah i think i just wanted to to kind of live alone at that point already so then in the second year i moved in with a friend of mine who i still live together with today and um i i have to say i really enjoyed waking up and kind of yeah, I don't know, walking across Plaza Mayor, seeing that in the morning. I'm not a morning person, so that definitely made my morning a bit better. And then having like that beautiful walk towards the campus, I have to say, I really, I really miss that. I, I really do. I agree. My mornings was kind of similar, walking across yeah. Plaza Mayor, going to Granier, the little bakery yeah, next exactly. door, getting a coffee. Limon y menta and getting Limonimenta. the empanadas. That was nice, yeah. And then me running into you, another one, going to class <laughs> as well. Yeah, it was very nice, I have to say. Yeah, you'd always bump into people. And I, I I know a lot of people also really, really enjoy like the way here or enjoy like going to Maria Molina if they started there. Um, but I think cons- considering that, again, I really don't do well in the mornings and I we had morning classes for so long, just kind of seeing the light going through the trees like on the way down and kind of feeling the water of the river. I know for me that, that, that was really beautiful and I do miss that, yeah. Segovia made the mornings a little bit better now. Yeah, it, it really did. It really did. Even if it was rainy, you kind of you kind of still appreciate it a lot, I think. Actually it makes me quite emotional to talk about it now. <laughs> it's a beautiful scenery. Yeah, so it really, really touches you. Yeah. So coming back to what you said before, like not choosing Segovia because it's a small town, yeah. um, it's a terrible mistake. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I think people underestimate like also if if you love like beautiful architecture, you love history, you love nature, you love just seeing a lot of people, I think Segovia is the place for you. Would I want to be there for more than two years? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that would kind of push it a bit too much. Because it is true at some point you you kind of miss the variety of having certain restaurants or different bars or seeing different areas. You do miss it at some point. That's when you start going more to Madrid over the weekends. But I think for two years it's perfect. and. Again, like our experience was also pre-COVID, which we have to remember. Um, so it was, or like actually it started, like the, our second year was full of full of COVID already. Yeah, COVID hit our first year, second semester. That's true, that's true. But I feel yeah. like, I don't know, in my head it's still, because we all knew each other so well already by second year when we were coming back, that we already had these relationships maintained, you know. Um, but I still think now from what I've been hearing, like Segovia has been opening up again and the experience that people are having is kind of the same now again. Um, But also what I remember is on campus how people would advertise events and like from uni or if it was like a club or a bar and like have music on campus. And I do think that's going to come back. And that was something that's really lovely about Segovia. I can see people putting up the speakers in front of the cafeteria outside and blast music, advertising an event for Irish probably. Yeah, exactly. I do think that's coming back because from what I've heard, well, Irish, like the club that we always used to go to, um, like people are going there again and um, it's just like I guess it's kind of changed where people go um, but um, yeah that's all coming back and so I think it still is like going to be a lovely a lovely place to live in. For sure. So talking about Irish mm-hmm. we both are very familiar with it. Yes. We went there almost every night first year I bet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who doesn't know it was our main club. Yeah. It's like a one The only room. club, essentially, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they popped up some other ones, I feel. Yeah. Bao and Sabbath yes, down yes. the hill. That's true. But Irish was like our main yes. go-to. Mm-hmm. So what made Irish was special for you? It was just that um, every Tuesday and Thursday, the entire student body would be there. It was crazy. Like, I think I would, even if I didn't see people for like, in class or outside of class, I would see them on a Thursday night in Irish. And that was just super funny because like um, it was free entry. So you just even pop in just to see who's there and say hi. And then you'd leave again or like you'd stay until six. It was it was fun. Um, and um, I think it was also the charm of it is that the playlist was always the same. You could tell the time by what song was playing. True. And the confetti comes out. Exactly. In certain beats. Exactly. Yeah. You could tell the time. <laughs> Um, and I think it just had such a charm because everyone was there and everyone was, was enjoying it. And that's why it felt like such a community. And I guess on Friday morning, everyone was also super tired, which, yeah, maybe, maybe wasn't that the smart. Coming sunglasses. But, exactly. <laughs> but everyone was kind of in the same boat. It was fun, yeah. For sure. The, the community feeling, they were all in it together. Yeah. And I remember going to Irish on a few nights just to stay outside 
and like run into people. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a smoker, but I will carry yeah. like a lighter in case someone needed yeah. to just have a conversation. To make <laughs> exactly. A lot of friends were yeah. made out there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So moving on to another scenery of Segovia. Yeah. Um, did you go out a lot to eat in restaurants? I didn't that much, I have to say. Um, I feel like that's one of the things where I did I missed out a bit because I think there would have been a lot more better food. But I did go to um, what was it called, Jose Maria, right? Um, I remember my it's like one of the oldest um, restaurants in the entire area and the entire Castile Leon. Castile Leon, yes. It's next to the aqueduct, right? Um, it's next to um, Irish, actually. Oh yeah, true. In like the little crossroad. Exactly, exactly. They have the um, traditional pig, pig there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I remember going there my first night to go away with my parents, and um, I was with my sister, and she is an animal lover, not a vegetarian, but she loves animals so much, so she couldn't look at the little piglet. Mm-hmm. So I missed that part. But essentially, what they do is like um, they take um, a plate and throw it on the ground in like a towel, and they use that to cut the the the, the pig apart. The Oh, a little wow. baby pig, essentially, right? And then you eat it. And um, it's it's very traditional. It's super fun. The food is good um, if you like pig. If you don't and you're a vegetarian, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's in so many places in Spain. Um, but yeah, that was that was super nice. Yeah. But apart from that, I didn't I didn't explore the restaurants too much. I have to say, I went to Tuma a few times, mm-hmm. um, which was Arabic um, and was very fun as well. The shawarma was really good. The shawarma, yeah. And also, if you sat on the the aqueduct terrace in the sun with a view of the aqueduct, that was super nice. That was one of the main reasons I used to go. So yeah, that was really fun. So it sounds like we were surrounded by all of these attractions of Segovia. Yeah. That yeah. people come worldwide to mm-hmm. see, like the aqueduct yeah. from the Roman time, the cathedral that's also massive and super impressive. Yeah. We literally were sitting next to it every day. Exactly. It's crazy. Like I um I'm I was also surprised that I don't know, me living in Germany and growing up in Germany, that I didn't know about that before. Because I visited Madrid before, but I never heard of Segovia, which is actually so sad. But so many people come specifically to visit Segovia, which is understandable. There's so much history and architecture. It's beautiful. And I feel we got a lot of the history, too. I don't know if you went to the tour we had in class one day with uh, one device. With Miguel. With Miguel, yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was giving us a tour around the campus yeah. and explaining the, the history yeah. of the Alla Magna, which you are very familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like the roof on top, like the yeah. eagle roof. On, it's crazy. On top of the, the Alla yeah. Magna. Um, and all of the small little corridors, mm-hmm. um, the secret uh, passages around the campus. Yeah. And you know what, what actually stayed really with me? That you know where the cafeteria is, that underground, that used to be a cemetery. Mm-hmm. So like where you're, where you're standing on and eating on is you're standing on top of a lot of bones, essentially, which is crazy to think about. Or also the fact like um, the dormitory there that it was first, what was it first? Like it was um, a, a monastery. A monastery, yeah. Then it was um, I think it was a, a prison. prison. And then it was an orphanage. True. Right? And I remember actually on my first day when I visited the campus, um, there was actually an open day for for people who used to live in the orphanage. So my dad in his broken Spanish, he talked to to these men who used to live in the orphanage. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just crazy to think about that now it's it's a university dorm on campus. Yeah. Time change. Yeah, a lot. For sure. So talking about the Ala Magda, mm-hmm. uh, which is our assembly hall, essentially, yeah. uh, where we have the graduation mm-hmm. and where we had the opening day. The first day we came to uni, yeah. we met there. But you have a special relationship to Ala Magda. Yeah like to tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah, so I've always loved theater. And so when I started in Segovia, I joined the theater club. And um, which was what was really cool in Segovia is that we had rehearsals in Aula Magna. And um, again, we had it on a Friday, the rehearsal. So we were all usually pretty tired from Irish. But like, it was lovely because you would be in this beautiful historical, um, like it's not a chapel, but, but how do you call it? Like a church, essentially, on, like attached to the campus, right? And um it was beautiful. The echoing was lovely. The roof was beautifully decorated. And yeah, we were just rehearsed there and even perform our plays there. So that was really cool to have like, I don't know, to, like, to do that and like kind of explore the creativity in a, in a very historical space. So how did the theatre club evolve for you? Because now you're the co-leader of the club, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we have a lovely team that we started the theatre club with in Madrid this year uh, when we moved. 
And um, yeah, it was it was very cool. We did a play, which was very fun to do. I met a bunch of people that I'm so close to through that club. And then in second year, it got hard with COVID because we wanted to to do a play, which obviously didn't work because of the COVID restrictions. Then we wanted to make that into a movie, which also didn't work because we never had experience on making a movie. And then um, a friend of mine wrote a, who's now leading the club with us, he wrote a short script and we um, made his, his, his short film, which is really cool. And so he's continuing doing that. And so, yeah, now we started it. Now we started in Madrid and we're doing a play at the end of April. So if people oh. want to join. <laughs> Do you have a date already? Um, we're doing it between the 26th and the 29th of April, but no complete date set yet. So after spring break, mm -hmm. you have to be a lookout for the advertisement yes, for the theater exactly. club. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm. I remember the first play. I went to it in first year. It was a bit weird, yeah. It was very interesting. Yeah. And you had a lot of different characters yeah. and uh, people really like shocked you with their talent. You one <laughs> of them. Um, and another person who shocked with talent was uh, the cafeteria guy. He was lovely. Oh, I miss him. Fernando. He was great. Yeah, he would um, he, he would always be in the plays as well. Um Yeah, and no, it was a, it was a very weird play, and it kind of evolved through improv because that was a kind of um, the tradition in the theater club in Segovia that you would have one play that someone wrote from the theater club and one play that would come up through uh, improv, and so that, that's the play that happened. And yeah, I'm not saying it was the best, but it was definitely a fun experience. <laughs> it was very fun to watch. <laughs> Thank you. It was the turn of the century, right? Exactly. It was the turn of the century. It was about all the about all the things happening in the 70s and 80s, about the feminist movements, about um, all the, the prevailing racism still, about um, the hippie movements, about the Vietnam War. So it was a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of things altogether. Beautiful. Mm. A lot of clubs hang out a lot in the Creativity Center. Yes. I don't think a Theater Club did that same, no? No, we didn't as much, but I've been a few times, yeah. How did you think about the Creativity Center and how would you explain it for mm -hmm. someone who doesn't know? Well, so first of all, the walk there was lovely. You walked along the river from the campus, which was great. And um, well, the Creativity Center was just a space where, um, so you had like kind of a common space where you could play music, where you could play um, billiard pool. You could mm -hmm. play pool. Um, and you could just kind of chill and paint and do whatever you wanted. And then there was um, an exhibition place where um, the head of the Creativity Center, Carlos, he always did great exhibitions. Um, so that was really fun to, to see. And they also had a lot of guest speakers. So it was just anything that's creative was in that space. And you just had to keep your eye open for for certain events that they did, which was which was really nice. And um, I think I didn't take enough advantage of it in hindsight. Um, but I did go to a few talks and exhibitions and that was great. Yeah, Nice. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend the student to check it out? Yes, 100 percent. I I I think it's very relaxing. Um, it kind of was a place where I mean, you also know better than me. You you <laughs> you were painting there a lot and hosting events there, but I just feel like it was a place where people just kind of really relaxed for a bit, you know. And then um, it gave them a little break on all the maybe stress and pressures that they felt. I agree. Yeah, for sure. Like I was hanging out there mm -hmm. quite a lot with art club and also different events, music club playing yeah. the same day as uh, where I would sessions. Um, which kind of make the house filled with music and vibrant. Uh, it was beautiful. Um, and I agree with the walk there. Yeah. It's uh, totally worth it. A lot of people say it's uh, too far away. And I do agree with the walk up back. Like that one's up a bit the hill. tough. Yeah. It's tough, but it's uh, worth it. Plus yeah. you get a great butt. That's and, true. Uh, you do regularly. You, That's true. You're fine. <laughs> I was so much more sporty in Segovia than I am now. I agree. <laughs> I walked up that hill, um, I think last semester, after mm -hmm. not being in Segovia when we were living in yeah. Madrid. Um, and it was horrible. Yeah. Um, I feel like when you do it regularly, you get into it. Yeah, and you your body it, super, yeah. gets thank like are thankful for it mm -hmm. too. So yeah. for sure, don't fear the hike up the hill. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Beautiful. Maybe we can transition into mm -hmm. Madrid. Yeah. So how was it for you to move from Segovia, the close community where everything is a walk away mm -hmm. to the big city? I have to say I found it pretty hard, um, but also I always find it super hard to leave a place. So already when I knew like, okay, I have a month more in Segovia, I got so sad. So I stayed actually two weeks longer just to like kind of do everything one last time because I'm just very, very bad at leaving people in places. So what was that? Uh, 
What did you do one last time? So I went to Alcazar to the palace one last time. Um, I went to shout a bunch of times. Only a few people were like still in Segovia at that time. It was, um, yeah, it wasn't like, it was so warm in summer, which I'd also never experienced in Segovia. So it was really nice. We went to the hills, we went to the lake, just did everything one last time. And that, that was really good. It was very therapeutic in a way and just let me finish off with everything. And now I can enjoy Segovia every time I go back. Um, but yeah, so I found it quite difficult. And um, then obviously, It's not only a bigger city, but also the campus environment coming to the tower is extremely different. Um, alone, the commute is very different than walking along the river, essentially, <laughs> sure. in Segovia. Um, and I think that just took me a while to get used to it, especially like, you know, we barely bump into people anymore on the streets. You need to be super organized to meet people in a big city. Like the thing is, I, I grew up in, in a big city in Germany, but at the same time, It's a big city, but it has very small city-like elements in the sense of, like you always bump into people. There's one street where you see people. Um, there is like another area where people do this. Like it's always very like specific spaces. Whereas in Madrid, obviously it's bigger and it's much more spread out. And I think you just kind of need to adapt to become more organized, to like have more of a plan of what you do with your day and your weekend. So it's not that spontaneous anymore, right? I think I needed to learn how to budget a lot more for sure <laughs> because there's much more things you can do and there's mm -hmm. so much you want to see. So you need to, to make... Um, Where does the money go to? Exactly. You need to make yeah. sure that um, that you kind of prioritize with that. Um, and yeah, I, I think the, the main thing was just time planning. Yeah, for sure. So where do you live in Madrid? So I live near Seoul and I'm very lucky because actually six of my friends by accident moved in within like two minute radius of me. So I still have my little Segovia in Madrid. Um, so, and I really love that area. Um, I live in more of the, it's called the artist area. It's where all the writers used to live. And it's... La near Letras? Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. And... Um, Are there any reason behind the choice of uh, area? We honestly just found a really great apartment and we love the area because it's it's not as hectic as Malasania, for example. But it's still a lot going on. But at the same time, it's very like, I find it very romantic. Um, and so I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of like cute restaurants and, and um, bars and a lot of livelihood at the same time. But it's not as intense as I would say in Malasania. So that's why I really enjoy it. And I, again, in the morning when I leave my house, I still enjoy it because it's very beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's why we chose it. And it's, it's been fantastic. So I think a lot of people coming from Segovia with that beautiful scenery mm. and kind of emotional feeling talking about it now like it's similarly that we loved mm -hmm. it a lot so do you have any recommendations for students coming into madrid how to adapt to the big city mm -hmm. how to find a beauty in mm -hmm. the big city as well yeah um i think first of all just don't put that much pressure on yourself because i think i was kind of trying to mimic my life in segovia in the way it is in madrid and obviously that doesn't work exactly the same way And once I kind of started realizing that, I started to really, really enjoy Madrid because Segovia had a lot of perks and it was beautiful. But at the same time, Madrid is so lively and there's so much to do. And um, I have never lived in a place um, where I found that much joy in whatever I do as in Madrid. Because whether you have like museums or restaurants or bars or an art and wine where you paint um, or you go bowling or something like that's obviously things that you have in a bigger city and specifically Madrid you have so much choice and I think that's beautiful and I also know actually a lot of people that were so excited to move to Madrid because they thought Segovia was a bit too claustrophobic for them so it can go either way um, but yeah so I, I would say first of all don't pressure yourself too much um, take the time for yourself because it's so easy to get have so many plans and to overbook yourself and to be doing too much I guess so take time for yourself as well and go on a nice walk through Retiro because Madrid also has beautiful parks <laughs> and true, true, uh, true. <laughs> I feel like some days when I'm just don't know what to do and want to feel spontaneous like in Segovia um, I just go on a walk and like mm -hmm. end up in a new neighborhood exactly like five minutes away from my neighborhood is uh, I live five minutes away from Shreka yeah um, and I was walking there one day and just found like 
super cute cafes and restaurants, mm-hmm. like a book library. Yeah. Uh, would also serve wine. Exactly. Um, so I feel like you can find a lot if you step out of your door. No, for sure. I agree. Like, And that's kind of because I would say like in the first semester of moving here, I felt like a bit too overwhelmed. So I don't think I explored that many new things. And then in second semester, I kind of made it more of a mission to just go on random walks with people and just kind of have a coffee there and there and just see how it goes. And I found so many beautiful places and it was so much fun. And Majid genuinely has so much to offer. And again, I I, I love Segovia, but I do think two years was enough. And it is at some point a bit more, uh, very important to move to a big city and kind of experience how life actually is. Segovia was a bubble and it was beautiful and it was perfect to study and start university. But Madrid is more what real life is like in the sense of like you have a big commute. Um, Also, the tower obviously feels a bit more um, like an actual maybe job environment versus like a university campus. It just feels a bit more grown up, you know, and I I do think that's important. And also like learning to organize your time and organizing your money. Those are things that you learn in a big city like Madrid. And luckily, Madrid's beautiful. That's true. So it feels like you grew up a lot moving to Madrid learning how to budget your both your money and time. Yeah, mm. I, I would definitely say so. I think especially considering it was amplified so much by the quarantine of COVID and COVID in general, I feel like a lot of people in our year group grew up very fast, if that makes sense, the mm-hmm. second they moved to Madrid. Um, and I think it's done a lot of people very well. I, I know a lot of people are focusing a lot more on their careers. I, I feel like Segovia was kind of two years where people just enjoyed life, got to know people and met people. And now people are finding a much better balance of focusing on career academics and also exploring Madrid, seeing friends and maintaining those relationships. And I think it's 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 very nice to see how people have kind of flourished with that as well. That's beautiful. And mm. I know you have a very nice friend group too yeah. that you kind of moved from Segovia <laughs> to here. Yeah, I love them a lot. As friends are important for yeah. sure. And talking about the career part and mm-hmm. passions, how do you feel like your passion has been cultivated within mm. IE? So I think for me, it's always super difficult because I already take politics on economics and law. So it's already super spread out. And then on top of that, I've always wanted to do theater and film. So it's really like for me, it could always go in any direction. And um, I think it's nice that IE has definitely always been a super great help with like supporting the more academic side of it versus I can also all with all these people that I met in Segovia kind of um, just kind of do the theater things and have fun messing around with that and do short films with friends and I think the same with you like you've always been super academic and very good at that and at the same time you've always taken art so seriously so I think in the same way we both have kind of been able to find a balance with that and that's been great. I agree. Mm. And I feel like the clubs here at IE is a great way of like yeah. taking your own initiative and really involve yourself as much as you want. Yeah. And I'm excited to look at the, um, to see those films that you guys are mm-hmm. making. Yeah. And I hope to see more of them. I hope so as and well. And <laughs> April after spring break, I'll be there. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming today. It was super lovely talking to you about Segovia, unraveling all the memories and talking about the experience moving to Madrid. Thank you for having me, Ida.